Okay, so I'm going to do a little tutorial here. Um, I, uh, I made this image in Photoshop and uh, I drew it first on my iPad in the brushes program and then emailed it to my desktop and what I'm going to do now is uh, throw in a little bit of a background. Um, I know a lot of people struggle with backgrounds. Um, this is kind of a uh, a cheating way of doing it if you will but it's kind of a fun way something that I've been playing with lately um, and that is to just throw a photograph in the background and blur it out so I'm going to show you how I do that first um, you know this image let's get rid of this uh, layer one right here um, you know I created these these two characters as assets so they are um, they're standalones and there's no background um, in here so that's where I'm gonna start um, and if you want to see the tutorial on how I paint in Photoshop you can just simply go to folioacademy.com and I have um, a couple of digital painting videos and some other videos there and a bunch of other artist videos okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn that layer back on this is my image layer right here and I'm just going to bring in a photograph and I just just drug it in and here it is right here of some trees and this was a photo that I bought on Shutterstock I uh, bought a bunch of photos to uh, make video tutorials with and this was one of the images that I grabbed so I'm just gonna um, enlarge this now one of the things that you can take advantage of when you're um, making a background is the fact that things in the distance um, tend to blur so if you don't have enough resolution to match your image don't worry about it so much um, if if blurring it out will work and that's what I'm gonna do so I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna click place and then I'm in uh, CS5 right now and so I need to rasterize this this image if I'm gonna make other edits on it so I'm just going to come down here to rasterize the layer and now it's just like any other layer okay so what I'm going to try to do is make this this work with my picture and so I decided that um, let's just make it a little bit bigger here I can I can I can change the dimensions now nobody's going to notice or, or know if I stretch these trees a little bit and plus I'm going to blur them so I just want to get a, a place where they they work well with my background. Now I know that the way that I painted these um, these uh, characters is that they are basically a darker outlined image, and I need them to be on a lighter background. So you know, like right here wouldn't work because then the beak gets lost. So what I want to do is just kind of try to find a place that works really well. And if you'll notice on the left, as I move this down, you can start to see under the chin or behind the chin of the, the little creature there um, that you can start to see the trees poke through. And that's something that I want. I don't, I don't want it to be totally black over there. It gets kind of boring. So I want there to be a hint of some trees over there. And um, so I'm just going to kind of move it around and, and try to find the best location for it and then I'm gonna hit apply and this isn't the best place but I'm just gonna kinda save that I'm gonna go ahead and blur it right now so I'm gonna go to filter blur and then I'm gonna go for a Gaussian blur and uh, you can see immediately that that will just kinda blur it out and you can let me bring this in you can uh, you can play with this slider right here and as I move it over you get different various amounts of blur to where you can't even tell what's going on back there. Now one of the reasons why I want to blur it is because I don't want you to, to look back there and when it's crisp like that you see all kinds of detail in the background and so it's really distracting and your eye will go back there and, and investigate some of the things that are happening but when I blur it your eye tends to focus more on those foreground creatures which is what I want you to do. So I'm probably going to leave it somewhere around there for now. Another thing that I did on this image that I thought would be kind of cool 
is to try something new because I always like trying new things. So I want I'm gonna play on these these colors. You can kind of see that that these two creatures share the same colors, and kind of the statement that I was kind of thinking with that is that we all have things in common even though we have differences. And so I kind of thought that would be kind of a neat little concept to play with. But in order to emphasize that, I want to take the color out of the background. So I'm actually going to um, go to Adjustments, and I'm going to go to Hue Saturation, and I'm just going to take the color right on out. Because I think it would be cool to have to emphasize the color by having um, you know, just a black and white background. Okay, so now there's some, some good things happening and some bad things. We're kind of bumping into the bird. The bird doesn't really have a great place to kind of I'm gonna stretch this image out and in so doing let's see if we can get it to a good place. I kinda of like that, but I'm still getting really close on this beak here, so let's stretch it out. And I'm just grabbing the handle on the side and just kind of stretching it out a little bit. And I kinda of like that better, but I'm still not Totally right. I want my cake and eat it too. I want maybe what I'll do is actually duplicate this layer because I want to get those those openings of the trees behind the the head of the um, creature. I don't even know what he is, um, like a dragon or a, a some sort of a troll or orc or something. I don't know. Um, okay, so now. I'm going to move this picture down to where I want it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I'm going to erase off what I don't want. So I have 100%. I'm just going to erase this so it goes back to where I wanted it. And you can see now that I'm going to have my cake and eat it too because now over here I have that little piece of tree coming through there that I wanted. Now, one thing that I'm seeing is that the overall, you know, I'm get, I've got some dark hair up here, the dark eyebrow, um, the dark hair down here, and it's starting to conflict um, with the background. So I'm going to merge these two layers together, since they're going to work together now. And then I'm going to come up here to Opacity, and I'm going to turn that background down a little bit. Uh, something like that, maybe. Maybe like that. So I can see my image against the background, but it's all going to be a little bit lighter. And then I'm going to go ahead and lock this layer, get another layer, and I'm going to actually cheat a little bit. I'm going to paint some white in here. To just kind of reinforce the contrast. Since it's a blurry background anyway, it won't really matter. You'll still be able to see the trees. And I want the highest contrast area to be right around here. So that kind of emphasizes that. And I and I want this to kind of fall back. So I'm gonna do one more thing, and that is I'm gonna get a multiply layer. And then I'm going to get some black. And then I'm just going to kind of darken around the edges a little bit more to focus your eye more and knock this down a little bit back here. I really don't want you to, to look back there too much. And your eye will always go to the greatest contrast areas. So now I've got you focused right here. And that's pretty much it. That's my little um, background that I threw in there. Um, really easy. Uh, it can work for some images. It might not always work. Um, you could always illustrate it as well and use the photograph as a guide. Um, but anyway, there you go. Thanks for watching.